Hello, Ralph McIntyre with Astro Map Links. Well, I'm here to do another video in my video series, Making Friends with Your Pluto. Welcome all you Pluto people, come on in. In this video series, we talk about Pluto through the signs. And we're up to Pluto and Scorpio, the pure Pluto Scorpio people. For all you new people, please click like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you're notified when I upload videos. Also, you'll find in the description below my website, there's links to get readings for me where I dive deep into helping you understand your unique astrology. In these videos, they're more generic for everyone, but on the re in my readings, I dive deep into really helping you understand your astrology, work through your karmic blocks, and really have a different relationship with your outer planets like Pluto, Neptune, and so on. All right, without further ado, let's get into Pluto and Scorpio. So we'll start with a little review and then we're going to dive into it. So from an evolutionary perspective, you got to remember that the birth chart is here to help your soul evolve. Your higher self in the universe conspired to have you come onto the planet to where all the planets in the skies were lined up to be your friends. And so this is important to look at your chart from this perspective, because when you look at your chart from the perspective of it's here to be your friend, rather than looking at it, it's like, oh, I got Pluto in the 12th house, or I got Pluto square, or whatever, or Pluto sun, or whatever, 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 and you think about it as being bad, then all you see is the bad aspects about it. And that's one of the things that I'm dedicated in this video series and on my channel to help people understand that the planets in the skies aren't your enemy. It's that ego. It's the karmic habits that are your enemy. And this is so pertinent with Pluto and Scorpio generation because Pluto, the ability to look into, see into the dark, you know, that Scorpio, that truth seeking. You know, so your superpower is the ability to see into the dark and see behind the scenes and come up with the truth, the higher truth, the more soul level truth. The other aspect about Scorpio that very few people talk about that I real big proponent of is if you think about cancer in the fourth house is where and how you nurture yourself, that motherly, that homey energy. Scorpio is a water sign the same as cancer but from a scorpio perspective it's that deep soul level nurturing not the earthly body nurturing but the soul level nurturing what f makes you feel safe and alive to to express that deep connection Scorpio is also a sign that's relationship oriented, wanting to explore that union between the two humans. You know, it rules tantric sexuality. It rules deep soul level sex and connection. Now, it doesn't have to be sex, so to speak, but it does have to have a deep soul level connection. And that could be with another person or just with yourself or with the universe. But, you know, letting the boundaries between you and others disappear. That's kind of what's on the table with Scorpio. And so you remember Pluto is where your superpower is and also all the things that are keeping you from the superpower. And so with Pluto and Scorpio, you have this ginormous superpower, but also very, very likely you have a ginormous block to your superpower from all the karmic wounds, all the early childhood wounds, all the karmic habits that you need to let go of. And a lot of this has to do with your ability to see into other people's, so to speak, baggage. You know, and depending on your maturity and who you choose to share that with and how you choose to share that and how you choose to use that information. Because you can use that information to help people or you can use that information to hurt people 
Or you can inadvertently share it to someone with someone who's not ready for it and ending up, you know, invoking feelings that are intense for the other person. Not to say any of this is bad or wrong or, or good, you know, but it's about how it affects you and your current life. Because so often, especially with Pluto and Scorpio's ability to see into other people's trouble, trauma, is that, you know, as a good person, we'll take on other people's trauma, drama. And that's one of the first things to kind of learn with Pluto and Scorpio, and particularly depending on the placement, but is to learn that, you know, just because you can see into what their issues are, doesn't mean you should take them on. You know, that con concept of not my karma, not my responsibility. And this could be very challenging because the depth of perception of Pluto alone is spectacular. And then you add the depth of perception of Scorpio with it ruling the Pluto makes for a very big planet. Any time a planet's in its own sign makes for a big planet. And so Pluto's a big planet all by itself. And so Pluto's sitting there in its own sign. Wanting to be your superpower. Remember, remember, remember. Don't let anyone tell you anything different. The planets in your birth chart are there to be your friends. They're to her. They're, they are there to help you on your soul's goal of reconnecting back in with the divine. And so being able to see deep into your own blockage as well as others. And so one of the things with Pluto and Scorpio, there's a certain amount of interpersonal work that's on the table. You know, it's not really optional for this Pluto placement. This will come forward whether you want to or not. You know, and the thing about Pluto, the thing about the subconscious and all this is it is really good at bringing in interactions in the world. It's good at manifesting interactions in the world to help you kind of point at the things that you need to let go of. And this is part of the reason why Pluto gets such a rad rap, because it's so good at this. And the ego's like pointing bad at Pluto. It's like, look at Pluto's wrecking havoc in your life. But in reality, it's that ego's unwillingness to let go that's really wrecking havoc. It's the Pluto's magnetizing interactions in your life to point at these subconscious blocks. And this is where it's really important, in my opinion. I say this often, but I think it's very important, particularly with this Pluto placement, is to take a look at every interaction in your life and look at it from the lens of your subconscious manifesting of it. So if there's something in your life that's not working for you, look to why the subconscious manifesting it. Get beyond the story, so to speak, and get to the core wounded feelings. And this is where Pluto and Scorpio's superpower really comes in strong because it's so adept at being able to look at and hang out and, and feel and, and, you know, really dive deep into this underworld, so to speak, of the ugliness of soul trauma, soul level trauma, and all the little ways in which it'll manifest. So by looking at every interaction, particularly the ones that light you up, if you have a reaction, remember the reaction is always you. No matter what the person does, the reaction is always you. Now, obviously speaking, if somebody hits you over the head with a baseball bat or does something like that and you have a reaction like that, we're not quite talking about that. We're talking about the emotional reaction. We're talking about when you get lit up, so to speak. And also, you have to be careful with this particular placement about lighting other people up. You know, because remember, Scorpio is around that deep bonding. So you have a Pluto in the deep bonding sign of Scorpio, meaning your soul's looking at learning how to recover the ability to, to bond deeply, to lose themselves, lose thyself in another person. 
And there's a difference between completely losing thyself in another person and merging and becoming one with the other person. And it's not about, you know, becoming codependent, not about losing all your own free will into the other person. That's not what we're talking about. Generally, that's what the wound is about, though. So remember, Pluto and Scorpio in your birth chart, your soul came into this evolution with needing to learn how to open back up to that soul level bonding. And then if you ask the question why, that's when Pandora's box opens up. Because there's so many reasons why you need to recover from that. And the big reason is, is because for the heart to really truly get hurt, it has to be opened up and connected. And that's what we're talking about with this Pluto and Scorpio, opening that heart so wide open, connecting so deeply with another person, another monkey, so to speak. And you're bound to get hurt. You're bound to have feelings brought up, you know, and depending on who you chose in past lives or in early life or what your karma is, is how deep this wound might be. You know, so, so to speak of the last time you really opened up and connected with someone, you got so severely gutted, so to speak, you know, it may take you a while to regain the trust. And so one of the ways to keep yourself safe, especially with Pluto and Scorpio, is to alienate people. And one of the quickest, easiest ways to alienate people is to point at all their deep, dark secrets and kind of, you know, so to speak, point at what they don't want to look at. You know, and if you do this in a habitual way to kind of alienate people, you're really not serving yourself and you're not serving the other person. Because no matter how truth, true that truth is, no matter how true that scorpionic truth is, if the other person's not ready to hear it, it's really not a truth that means much. It's not able to be grounded in that other person's reality. So if you're using that Pluto and Scorpio to kind of shock and awe people, it's a way of protecting yourself. Well, the first thing I want to say is it comes really natural to you, you know, that that's one of that superpowers of that Pluto and Scorpio is to look and see into the things that are going to be shocking to other people. But you're probably finding that, especially as you get older in life, this doesn't serve you as well. You know, as a way of protecting yourself as a young person, one thing, but as you get older in life and you start to crave that connection, that soul level connection that that Pluto and Scorpio is really wanting, that soul is needing to achieve its evolutionary goals of this incarnation, learning how to use that depth in a way that doesn't alienate people. And this is so challenging because, you know, if you've been in relationships, if you've ever been into any kind of conflict in relationships, if you've ever had your ego triggered in a relationship, which pretty much anyone that has been in a relationship has had their ego triggered, that ego can be really vicious. And when you have your ego trying to be really vicious and it has that nuclear weapon of a Pluto and Scorpio ability to see and poke at the most tenderest part in your partners. Ouch is one way of describing it, you know, and, you know, the, the desire to hang out in that, you know, one thing about Scorpio energy is it, it, you know, and it's funny, I, I I'm going to do the classic Gemini thing here and, and counterdict myself because I welcome all of my Pluto people's intensity. I welcome that Pluto intensity. I welcome that Scorpionic intensity. But intensity gets a little old when it's the only thing on the menu, so to speak. You know, sometimes we have to run to the other side of the Zodiac and hang out in that Taurus of relaxing, letting go. You know, we don't always want to be in a psychotherapy session, so to speak. 
And so this is important to realize with that Scorpio Pluto is to kind of moderate where you're intense, where you're diving into that uncomfortableness and also where you're choosing not to, where you're choosing to kind of get along. Because remember, relating with another person is a dance. It's like trying to balance on a, a tightrope with two people. You know, two passionate people trying to stand on the same tightrope and not fall off, not push the other person off, not fall away from the other person, but get closer. And it's not an easy dance, you know, especially when you're diving into Scorpio realm, you know, because Scorpio is all those hidden subconscious wounds that no longer serve you, ready to come out. So yours are ready to come out and you're so able to see your partners and they're ready to come out. And then very likely if you're dating someone around your same age, you both have Pluto and Scorpio. So you're both doing this dance of how intense is too intense. When am I being intense to push you away? And when am I being intense to push, pull you closer? Because remember, the goal of Pluto and Scorpio is to bond, merge, get close, lose the boundaries of self with others. So if you're using that Pluto and Scorpio to push people away, it's really not what it's meant for. If you're using that Pluto and Scorpio to keep you safe, it's not what it's meant for either. And this is not easy. I'm, I'm you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat this, so to speak. You know, but it doesn't have to be miserable. Remember, the ego is what makes it miserable. The ego holding on. So the more you can look, use that. Because that superpower of yours is not only good at looking in other people's, so to speak, basement. But it's look at, good at looking in your basement. Look at how are you keeping yourself from the connection you so desire. And when I say look, I'm not talking about look with your eyes. I'm talking look with that Pluto's ability to see in behind the covers. You know, so often when I talk about sitting in the underlying feeling, that's kind of what I'm talking about. That Pluto Scorpio cut, so to speak, the flashy story that's hiding the underlying issue. Because Pluto and Scorpio wants you to get to the bottom, wants to get to where it's actually affecting you, what's actually affecting you, and let go of it. Move past it so that you can open up and connect with other people. And the more you do this, the more that power is going to come out, you know? And so this is that dance of, you know, mating or connecting with other humans. It's like, how much Scorpio am I and how much Scorpio am I not? How much Scorpio can my relationship handle? And it's funny because being a Scorpio type, being a Plutonian type, you know, joking around with your intensities, welcome. But I'm the first to admit, and I use intensity to keep people away. I'll scare people away from seeing me with intensity. I'm not necessarily proud of saying that. It's not like I'm trying to say I'm proud of it. But I, you know, willing to look at that. You know, and sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes you use intensity to push away people who just want to kind of suck on you and kind of, you know, take your energy. But if you're pushing away people that you want to connect with, you know, that, that's where it gets to be a problem. And it's a dance. And there's no necessarily right or wrong. You know, don't use anything I'm saying to beat yourself up. I'm, I'm not trying to beat up on Pluto and Scorpio people here at all. You're some of my favorite Pluto people. We love you some Pluto and Scorpio people. You have so much wisdom available to you. <laughs> Bringing on the world, helping us all get along, helping us all get past our, so to speak, subconscious blocks that you inherently can just so easily see. But I also want to, you know, call a spade a spade. You know, 
are you being too intense to keep yourself safe? Because that, that's the case. It's not going to serve you long run. You know, as you get older, it's not going to serve you at all. And as I'm recording this video, Uranus is moving through Taurus, oppose all of those Pluto, Scorpio. Probably do a couple more videos. I know I've done a couple videos on this, but, you know, Uranus really wants you to kind of step outside the box and look at where you're nurturing yourself, where your uniqueness is nurturing yourself, where you're using that Pluto and Scorpio to nurture yourself versus keep yourself safe, where you're using that Pluto and Scorpio to kind of open up and connect in with that deep soul level desire. All right. Well, thank you so much. I hope you liked this video. I'm probably going to go into deeper into each one of these Pluto signs at a later date, but I thought I'd just dive into it with this series. All right. Thank you so much. Have a spectacular evening.